The Competition and Markets Authority, which is the competition authority in the UK in charge of uh, checking mergers and acquisitions, did a stellar job with the information data it, and data it was provided with during the phase one and phase two investigations of Sony's acquisition of Cobalt's assets, AWOL and Cobalt's neighboring rights. Why is this merger inquiry important for the music industry? How did it come about? Was the merger inquiry's outcome fair and appropriate to preserve healthy competition in the music distribution and rights management sectors? Let's start by looking at what happened. Well, Cobalt Music Group Limited, which we're going to shorten from now on to Cobalt, is an independent rights management and music publishing company founded in 2000 in New York, in the US. Cobalt has several subsidiaries, all providing services relating to rights management and music publishing, such as in particular AWOL, a music platform profit providing marketing, distribution, and other services to independent recording music artists and independent labels, and Cobalt's neighboring rights, also known as KNR, which collects neighboring rights, royalties, arising from the public use of music recordings on behalf of artists. And on the 18th of May, 2021, Sony Music Entertainment, which is, which is one of the three major labels in the music industry, along with uh, Universal and Warner, and which is also a wholly owned subsidiary of the Sony Group Corporation, which we're going to shorten to Sony, acquired AWOL and KNR from Cobalt for around 430 million US dollars in cash. So Sony Music Entertainment, SME, we're going to call it SME from now on, bought AWOL and KNR from Cobalt for around 430 million US dollars on the 18th of May, 2021 in cash. So it bought all the, it bought all the issued shares of these two companies. So why did this acquisition happen? Cobalt's uh, uh, rationale for the acquisition was twofold. A sale would allow the company to reduce its debt and return capital to long-term shareholders. Also, Cobalt considered SME's offer to be the best means of achieving both of his, of his aims. Cobalt also justified its decision to sell to SME by saying that a wall and KNR would benefit from the acquisition for a number of reasons as follows. Being part of Sony's global network would enable AWOL and KNR to grow internationally, supporting the global aspirations of the artists. AWOL artists would gain access to the expertise of The Orchard, one of Sony's subsidiaries, including tools to manage digital advertising campaigns, optimize YouTube channels, and pay out royalties to collaborators. Also, AWOL would benefit from exposure to Sony's frontline labels, and AWOL artists would have easier access to Sony's resources, including the potential to achieve increased exposure and investment. And being a part of Sony would open up more opportunities for AWOL and KNR in the form of financial support. Sony's rationale was not openly uh, mentioned in the um, any documents that I have reviewed even the um, uh, sort of uh, statement of response made by, uh, by Sony's lawyers um, to the um, merger inquiry. But basically the rationale of Sony to buy AWOL uh, was that it would, which provides services quite similar to those offered by Sony's subsidiary, The Orchard. So buying competing companies such as AWOL is an astute way to beat the competition and force consolidation in the music industry. And in particular, in the music rights management and distribution sectors to Sony's advantage. So it's just buying back competitors really. So why and how did the competition um, and, and markets authority review and control the acquisition? 
On the 16th of September 2021, the CMA, so this is the abbreviation for Competition Markets Authority, in exercise of its merger control duty under Section 22.1 of the Enterprise Act 2022, 2002, sorry, the Act referred to the acquisition for further, i.e. phase two, investigation and report by a group of CMA panel members. This was after a lengthy investigation process into the acquisition, which started on the 17th of May 2021, uh, conducted by the CMA, the Competition and Markets Authority, via an initial enforcement order, continued via the launch of a phase one merger inquiry on the 1st of July 2021, and followed by a decision handed down on the 7th of September 2021 that the acquisition may be expected to result in a substantial lessening of competition, an SLC, a substantial lessening of competition within a market or within markets in the United Kingdom, and as such that the acquisition should be referred for a, a phase two investigation. So, on the website of the CMA, you can actually find a page dedicated to uh, the uh, various investigations made by the Competition and Market Markets Authority about this uh, 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 acquisition of uh, uh, by Sony of Cobalt Assets, AWOL and KNR. And in there, you will be able to review the initial enforcement order, the decision uh, handed down on the 7th of September 2021, et cetera, et cetera. So that's also a way if you want to, you know, expand and you know, your knowledge on this case, this is a good way to have a look at that. Alternatively, you can also have a look at our uh, thought leadership articles published on crefovi.com in English and on crefovi.fr in French, where we basically go in depth into the review of this, uh, of this decision with a lot of URL links um, linking to external content. So during the phase two investigation, the Competition and Markets Authority gathered further evidence, in particular by requesting third parties to make, submit, to make submissions on the issue statement and provide evidence. And then the CMA issued some provisional findings on the 11th of February 2022, by which it provisionally cleared the acquisition from resulting in a substantial lessening of competition, an SLC. And finally, it released a final report on the 16th of March, 2022, by which it fully cleared the acquisition. So this final report, which is 158 pages long, is uh, called the report, uh, moving forward. So what was the outcome of the Competition Markets uh, Authority review of the acquisition? Well, as I just mentioned, it cleared the acquisition at the end of its phase two investigation. And the report, provides not only a detailed analysis of the phase two investigation process performed by the CMA on the acquisition, but also a detailed snapshot of a UK streaming industry for recorded music. And really, it, the CMA did a fascinating job and really a thorough job. And anyone who actually wants to uh, find a position in this particular UK streaming industry and market should definitely re read that 158 pages report because it's so educational. I'll come to that, to that again in a second. Um, so what did the report say about the industry? Well, the CMA made it clear that the parties, i.e. Sony, Sony Media Entertainment and AWOL overlap in the wholesale digital distribution of recorded music and related artists artist and repertoire, so a &R services, including artist and label a &L services. So artist and repertoire services, a &R services, and artist and label uh, services, a &L services. So they overlap in the wholesale digital distribution of recorded music and related artists a and r services as well as a and l services and also they overlap in the supply of neighboring rights administration services through k and r so the wholesale distribution of recorded music is a two-sided market one side is artist facing where providers of recorded music distribution the providers compete to provide services to artists, for example, music distribution. 
supporting ANR, marketing and promotion. The other side is where providers compete to distribute their content, in particular to digital, digital service providers, such as Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Music, and YouTube, Google, for their streaming services, which account for the majority of consumer spending on music nowadays. Yeah, most um, um, consumers listen to music for streaming services, while 20, 30 years ago, we used to uh, listen to CDs or vinyls or cassettes, etc. This is almost over. And now we're focusing on streaming. And actually, the CMA made it clear from the outset of its merger inquiry that it will focus on the UK streaming, music streaming uh, market, not, not the rest. Providers offer the following recorded music distribution services, says the report. ANR services, which relate to the discovery, signing, and development of artists, as well as the recording of a music, for example, talent scouting, signing, and negotiating artist contracts, payment of any capital advances, funding and provision of artistic and creative support and direction, organizing tour support, and other supporting services. Other recorded music distribution services are marketing and promotion, for example, advertising, publicity, radio promotion, and playlist promotion, and also the wholesale distribution of recorded music, which refers to music companies bringing the artist music to market, primarily through digital service providers. It is also common for providers to offer physical distribution and digital distribution to down formats, although these are of declining importance, as I've just mentioned. A report goes uh, further by saying a recorded artist typically has five possible providers options when releasing music, depending on their circumstances. The first one is to sign with one of the three large companies that account for the majority of recorded music revenues, i.e. the three majors, Sony, Universal Music Group and Warner Music Group. The second option is to sign with a smaller independent label such as Beggars Group, B BMG Rights Management or Domino Recording Company. I um, re released last year an article about Domino Recording Company because it was a defendant in a case uh, brought against it, against Domino by Fortet, the British artist who wanted actually to get more uh, to renegotiate his, uh, his um, label uh, agreement with, uh, with Domino. So this is something you can, uh, you can review on our um, publication on crefovi.com in English and on crefovi.fr in, uh, in French, okay? As well as our live webinar on this, on this case. The third option for recording artists is to use an artist services provider such as AWOL, Believe, Pious, Empire, or Virgin. The fourth option is to choose to distribute their music as a self-releasing artist using an established platforms known as a DIY platform, such as DistroKid, CD Baby, or One RPM, Dito, United Masters, and The Muse. Or fifth option, some artists secure the services of a manager and team for various levels of promotion and other support and arrange distribution via a label services provider. The report keeps on, uh, keeps on detailing the kind of, uh, of um, uh, deal structures for recording artists in the music industry and finds three types of uh, 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 deal structures. The first one is the traditional recording agreements with the majors or independent labels offering high touch. So high touch is um, a word used in the report throughout, which refers to the invo involvement of personal attention and service. So if it's high touch, it means high personal attention and service. So as I mentioned, the first broadband deal structure is the traditional recording agreement with the majors or independent labels offering a high touch, i.e. significant artist support, A&R, marketing and promotion, and distribution services, where the artist agrees to long-term commitments and sometimes assigns a copyright uh, to, for an extended period of time or in perpetuity. The second broad deal structure is the, our services deals with a &L service providers, 
where an artist retains their copyright and receives marketing and A&R services. And the third option is a distribution only agreement with, with a DIY provider. AWOL is an example of an a &L, a &L, uh, provider with a tiered offering. So it's got three options, three options. AWOL Core, a AWOL Core, where artists join AWOL Core either by direct referral or more commonly following submission of their music to AWOL's online DIY platform. Then there is AWOL Plus, in which select AWOL Core members are upstreamed based on the number of played streams of the factors and the judgment of AWOL's expert team. And then there's AWOL Recordings, which is a service designed to support a select group of established and developing artists and provides a customized high-touch service so with significant artist support via elevated funding, digital marketing support, press and radio promotion, sync licensing, physical distribution, and local marketing plans in international territories. The parties also overlap in the provision of neighboring rights administration services. Uh, so these are the parties, obviously, to the merger, to the acquisition. Uh, the neighboring rights and title performing artists and those who own copyright in the related sound recording to comp compensation for the public use of the recording. Artists and copyright owners collect royalties from collective management organizations, the CMOs, directly, or use the services of neighboring rights collection suppliers, such as Cobalt's neighboring rights, which collect neighboring right royalties from CMOs on their behalf. So in relation to this merger inquiry, the party submitted that Sony's publishing arm, Sony Music Publishing, has no material market presence in supplying neighboring rights administrative services. Also, the CMA's phase one decision noted that there, are, there were a number of other close competitors to KNR, to Cobalt's neighboring rights, operating in the UK. For these two reasons, the Competition and Markets Authority found at phase one that the acquisition did not give rise to a realistic uh, prospect of a, 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 an SLC in relation to neighboring rights. So the CMA confirmed in the report that it did not investigate the supply of neighboring rights uh, administration services as part of its phase two investigation. It only focused on the AWOL acquisition. So the report then goes on into, into describing what is the relevant merger situation. So let's have a look at that. The Competition and Market Authority decided that the acquisition had created a relevant merger situation within the meaning of the 2002 Enterprise Act. Because firstly, as a result of the acquisition, the enterprises of Sony, including SME, Sony Music Entertainment, AWOL and KNR had ceased to be distinct. And also secondly, because the parties overlapped in the wholesale distribution of recorded music in the UK with an estimated, by the parties, combined share of supply of 20 to 30%. And therefore, the share of supply test was met. Then the CMA applies the... Uh, significant lessening of uh, competition, so the SLC test, which involves a comparison of the prospects for competition with the merger against the competition, against the competitive situation without the merger. The latter is called the counterfactual. So I repeat, the SMA applied the SLT, C, SLC test, which involves a comparison of the prospects for competition with the merger against the competitive situation without the merger. So what happens if the merger uh, uh, takes place and what happens 
what would have happened if the merger had not taken place. And this second option, the latter, is called the counterfactual. In the report, the Competition and Markets Authority sets out that the counterfactual is that AWOL would most likely have continued to supply services to both artists and labels and to compete in a similar way as prior to the acquisition, with a focus on improving the profitability of a business, but would not have been likely to materially expand its label business within the next two to three years for lack of uh, funds and cash flow. In the counterfactual, the CMA adds, Sony would be most likely to have continued to compete in a similar way as prior to the acquisition and would most likely provide high touch services to artists as it did prior to the acquisition and would make ongoing efforts to expand its artist services offerings in addition to continue its label services for the orchard. In the report, the Competition and Markets Authority explained that it assessed two theories of harm. First theory of harm concerns a loss of current and potential, i.e. future, competition in the supply of um, a and L services, artist and label services. This is a theory of harm arising from horizontal unilateral effects concerning in particular the loss of potential, i.e. future competition, from the future growth of AWOL and the orchard in a and L services, including the possible further diversification of the orchard and AWOL within artist services and label services res respectively. And the second theory of harm concerns a loss of current competition and potential, i.e. future and dynamic competition, in the supply of high touch services for art to artists. This theory of harm considers the impact of the loss of competition between AWOL recordings and SME on competition in the supply of services to artists. The CMA considered the extent of current and potential, i.e. future and dynamic competition between a and wall recordings and SME, and in particular, the impact on SME or AWOL's high service tier offering, which combines non-traditional contracts and high touch services to artists. So the CMA's assessment considered the extent to which this offering had been or was likely to continue to be an important competitive constraint on Sony Music Entertainment, as well as the extent of the remaining current and future constraint from other a and providers, ANL providers, independent labels, and other types of providers. So in relation to the first theory of harm based on the loss of current and potential future competition in the provision of a &L services, the Competition and Markets Authority concluded that the Orchard and AWOL did not currently compete closely in the provision of a and &L services due to their different areas of focus on label and artist services respectively, and due to the constraints from other competitors such as ADA, Virgin, Ingroves, Believe, Pius, Empire, and Fugger. Accordingly, the CMA decided that the acquisition had not resulted and may not be expected to result in a substantial lessening of competition due to a loss of current and or future competition in the supply of a and &L services in the UK. So bang, first test, first theory of harm debunked. Now about the second theory of harm relating to the loss of current and potential, i.e. future and dynamic competition, the supply of high touch services to artists, the Competition and Markets Authority considered that AWOL Recordings business model faced some challenges regarding its sustainability. As such, AWOL Recordings would not have materially improved its competitive offering absent the acquisition. Also, several other ANL ANLs providers offer non-traditional contracts and high touch services to artists. And some of these have uh, growing market shares. A number of a &L service providers have credible expansion plans. In addition, the largest independent labels in the UK exert some current and ongoing constraints on the parties. Considering the extent of a constraint from AWOL, 
which will be lost. And looking at the constraints from third parties in the round, the Competition and Markets Authority concluded that the constraint from AWOL, which will be lost, is not significant because these third party constraints are in aggregate sufficient to ensure that rivalry will continue to discipline the commercial behavior of the parties post acquisition in the supply of high touch services to artists. Therefore, the CMA decided that the acquisition had not resulted and may not be expected to result in a substantial lessening of competition as a result of a loss of current and or potential future and dynamic competition in the supply of high touch services to artists. Bam, strike of the um, theory of harm number two, and it's debunked as well. To conclude its report, the Competition and Markets Authority set out that while the acquisition by Sony through SME of AWOL and um, Cobalt neighboring rights had resulted in the creation of a relevant merger situation, the creation of that situation had not resulted and may not be expected to result in a substantial lessening of competition within any market or markets in the UK as a result of a loss of current and or potential future competition in the supply of ANL services and a loss of current and or potential competition in the supply of high touch services to artists. There you go. We've now analyzed the uh, outcome of this merger inquiry. And now we need to check whether we think that this outcome is fair, accurate, and also meaningful in uh, relation to what's going on in the UK music industry at the moment. In this post-COVID economy, it is important that companies be able to restructure, divest, and invest in a fast, smooth, and efficient manner, in particular, to, in particular to raise cash and therefore avoid liquidation or winding up, and or to refocus their businesses on ever evolving key services and all products. It's a matter of survival at the moment. Therefore, it is commendable that the Competition and Markets Authority struck the right balance between interfering with the acquisition by taking seriously its concerns of a substantial lessening of competition, which arose at phase one of the merger inquiry, and letting Sony and Cobalt go through with the acquisition once such suspicions of SLC were cleared upon completion of phase two of a merger inquiry. Having reviewed the report and the 22 other documents relating to the merger inquiry published by the uh, Competition and Markets Authority on its website, I am convinced that the CMA performed an exhaustive, systematic, thorough, and very well organized merger inquiry of the acquisition. As mentioned before, I even think that the CMA's final report is so analytical and, ex analytical and exhaustive that it gives an excellent view and analysis of the current UK as well as global music streaming market on a par in quality with the yearly IFPI's global music report, which sells at a five figure price now. So the report is not only educational, but it's also free. And it's as interesting as the IFPI's global music report, which sells for a five figure uh, price. My concern, however, is that the outcome of the CMA's merger inquiry reinforces the worrying trend of massive consolidation in the music industry with the majors making the bulk of the acquisitions of cash-strapped and intellectual property-rich music companies. This in turn means that end customers of the providers, i.e. the artists and labels, have less choices in the market for the distribution and monetization of their songs. This point indeed was made abundantly by Impala, the Independent Music Companies Association in its response to the CMA's issues statement during the merger inquiry. Also, the report 
needs to be read with a pinch of salt because the CMA received a very low response rate to their questionnaires sent to customers uh, with nearly half of artists and labels contacted by the CMA not having any views about the acquisition. Moreover, the Competition Markets Authority noted in its report with respect to the providers contacted for input as part of this merger inquiry that there, were, there was a lack of consistency across providers as to whether different elements of a businesses um, were accounted for separately or combined. For example, AWAL's figures include, included its DIY platforms where other providers did not other providers did not. So, for example, Believe reported separately from its uh, DIY subsidiary, TuneCore. To conclude, I think that the merger inquiry was fair, thoroughly performed, but not entirely accurate due, due to the lack of factual and exact data gathered by the Competition and Markets Authority. In terms of whether such merger inquiry is meaningful, it will definitely remain a landmark case for merger inquiries in the music industry for years to come, reviewed and studied by legal practitioners and law students around the world. However, I think that the outcome of this merger inquiry could have been more pro-competition in the music industry by, for example, requesting from Sony a long-term commitment not to buy any other competitors of AWOL and the Orchard in the future. As a, a passing note, since the acquisition, Cobalt as it stands today, so it's called now Cobalt Music Publishing, and it also still has AMRA, AMRA being the um, uh, a, a global digital music collection company, society set up by, uh, by uh, Cobalt. So Cobalt, as it stands today, with uh, Cobalt Music Publishing and AMRA, was sold to US-based private equity firm Francisco Partners, uh, riding the wave of uh, uh, abundant equity financing on the lookout for smart investments in the entertainment sector. So Cobalt keeps on evolving and, um, and, 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 and basically making the most of this uh, relative flexibility demonstrated by the um, competition authorities in the UK uh, and the US um, to uh, find some new partners. So there you go. This is my uh, uh, point on, uh, on uh, Sony's acquisition of Cobalt's assets. It's been lovely catching up with you, everyone. And I look forward to uh, be back in touch in the very near future. Bye for now. Bye-bye.